Welcome back, everyone. We're already actually at chapter 12 of this uh, Mirac book, uh, seventh edition. Um, so today what we're going to do in chapter 12 is actually talk about uh, creating and using classes. And so this is obviously from the assumption that you've done some programming before and uh, probably Java. And if you're familiar with Java, this isn't going to be an entirely uh, new topic for you. There's a lot of crossover between the two. However, now what we're doing, it relates to doing stuff with forms and having a graphical user interface. And so it's a continuation of what we've been doing, but we've been using, let's say, a lot this application so far without classes. And so what I want to do is dig deep into some of this content, but not all of it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to skip through the PowerPoint stuff because there's some things in there that are actually important to, to learn about. So I'm going to go through those, but I really want to focus on programming and less on doing PowerPoint slides. So this slide here is an important one that I wanted to actually get to. What we've been doing so far is primarily working in that top layer, the presentation layer. Okay, and this is where we've got our forms. This is our GUI stuff that we've been working on. Okay, and down at the bottom, we haven't really got into that yet, but that's coming. Different video. And then we've got this middle layer here. Okay, and this middle layer uh, is really, it, it's an interface between the database layer at the bottom and the presentation layer at the top. Okay, and it includes classes that, um, correspond to like business entities as an example so products or customers and it can also include classes that implement business rules such as like a discount rate or credit policies and stuff like that so when the classes represent business objects they're often called business classes and that's that middle layer here and another thing i want to kind of highlight is i'm going to see if i can draw it here an m Okay, that's a horrible M. Uh, and this is going to be view. And so I want to kind of consider this a little bit. Okay, this is a very, very loose analogy. So if you haven't done MVC before, model view control, this is a kind of uh, version of that. So our database would be the model. Up top, we've got our view. And this thing in the middle kind of helps direct traffic a little bit between the two. Okay. And so this is a very, very loose analogy. I'm not saying that this absolutely is an MVC paradigm, but there are parallels to this. Okay, so I want you to be aware of that. And so today what we're going to do is we're, we're going to spend some time in, in that middle layer. Okay, because we spent a lot of time so far in the presentation layer. We haven't been in the database layer yet, but we're going to really talk about the, the middle layer as well and how everything so, sort of connects. Okay. So you might kind of wonder why does the architecture exist in this three layer uh, way? And, you know, really what's probably the biggest two uh, advantages, and these come right out of the book as well. The, the two biggest advantages are this. If I have a development team, I can divide and conquer all of my tasks. I can assign uh, developers to the database. I can assign different people to building out the GUI at the top and then another team doing the middle layer. So that's the first advantage. I can modularize my tasks uh, within my project team. But the other thing is at the very bottom, uh, the middle layer and the database layer, you can actually take those and create class libraries that can then be used in different projects, uh, you know, different applications altogether. You can just kind of recycle that code or those databases uh, for different projects in the future that are unrelated to the current one you're working on. Okay, so those are two pretty significant advantages as a developer. But I do want to really stress that these are all classes. Okay, they're, and you can see it right there, each word class. Okay, so they're, they all handle their own classes and they handle them differently, but they are all classes in C Sharp. And sometimes this middle layer, we don't call it a middle layer class. It's called a business class. Okay. 
in any object that gets instantiated from the business class is often referred to as the business object. Okay, so if you hear me say business object or business class, you know that it's coming out of this middle layer. Okay, and ultimately the most important thing is that this middle layer is an interface between the presentation layer and the database layer. And that's why it's right in the middle. We're gonna say monkey in the middle, okay? So let's take a minute here and look at a class. And there's a couple of different sort of things that we refer to here, right? And this one here that we, we have this section here, these are, because they're in a class, okay, they're actually referred to as fields, okay? And different, depending on the, the programming language you deal with, you know, typically they're just variables or they're member variables, but whatever. In, in C Sharp, they're referred to as fields, okay? This one here you should be familiar with. This is just a, a constructor and you see that it has no arguments. So it's a, uh, a no argument constructor or an empty constructor. And you can see in this particular case, we have uh, three arguments to this particular constructor here, right? And if you wanna know more kind of how objects are made, I think in the very first video I did, I talked about uh, the difference between classes and objects and object instantiation. And you know, that was more of a big picture conceptual uh, section of the video that I did, but it's in there and it talks about instantiating, okay? And note here, right, these fields all appear inside the code or the different methods of your, your class, okay? Otherwise, they just wouldn't be there. And you notice because of the, the privacy here, these are all set to private. Your fields are set to private where your methods are actually set to public. And that is because of the idea of encapsulation. And I covered that in the other video as well. But because of that, this allows us to do this, this keyword, this, okay? Because we're talking about the object that we're creating and we're saying, okay, whatever is instantiated from this class is now my current object. So in another way you could say that is this object, okay? And so we are trying to basically pass information from let's say this code and to this code and then assign it over here. And then we can make reference to this side next, okay? And so this is kind of a, a very typical uh, syntax that gets used in a lot of different languages, including uh, C++, okay? And it's an important thing to understand how to do, right? And you should be able to, by this point, create a class, look at a class, and identify all the components in it, all right? It's pretty important stuff. So this one I wanna look at right here, okay? This is our getters and setters. And you've probably done these before, you've probably seen them. Uh, my preference would have been that they're actually switched around on the slide. Uh, I think that in order to get a value, you should probably set it first, okay? But that's just me. But just be aware if you're not 100% confident or sure about getters and setters, just understand that a get, when I say, hey, go get something, what happens is you always, you'll go and get it and then you'll return, okay? So get and return, that's a sort of a word key pair idea. Every getter always has a return value, okay? And every setter does not have a return value. Otherwise you wouldn't be setting, you'd be getting, okay? So if I go, if I say, hey, go over in there, get me that price tag, you're going to return with the price tag. And that's how that works. Okay, so I've decided I wanna get into the coding piece now and I'm gonna start building out this application. It's called uh, product maintenance. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll have a button here that adds a product. Okay, a description, a price, and then you can save it and delete it, okay? Now, 
keep in mind there's a database component to this, a database class to this that we're not really going to address. I'm going to work on the other stuff and I'm going to kind of glaze over the database class piece to this. Okay. So the way this works is if I say C sharp, um, uh, book on C sharp and then a price, I'm going to just, I don't know, 59.65. I'm just guessing, uh, 36. And we save that. And what happens is it goes into this product maintenance, uh, form. And from here I can add another one. Okay. Uh, C plus plus, um, book again. And the price is going to be, I don't know, a hundred bucks. I'm going to save that. And you can see, you know, I can keep storing these things in here. I can delete products. Are you sure? So it's got this dialog box that wants to ask me if I want to delete it. So delete. Yes. Okay. And then exit. So that's really what I want to work on. Uh, obviously I've already got the solution. Okay. And the solution actually is found in the Murak textbook. Uh, so I'm going to just demonstrate it. If you want, you can follow through and, and just do as I do. If you have the book, do it however you want to do it, but I'm actually going to go through and build out this entire application. And so I'm going to call this one, um, uh, I'm going to call it book product maintenance. Okay. So I'll create a C sharp windows desktop. Okay. And go to next. And I'm going to do this windows form dot app. This is the, uh, recent project template. So this is what I'm using. Okay. And I'll go to next and I'm going to, I think I called this, uh, book product, uh, maintenance. And I will save it where I save all of my stuff, uh, in here. C sharp, uh, let's say a week for code example, save it in there. And to confirm, I'm still in sort of the most up to date, uh, 4.7.2 doesn't matter too much for this. And I will create. So this is the form that I have and, you know, rather than, you know, go into great detail about building out the form, you know, that's kind of boring to watch, but I'm, I am going to build it out and I'm obviously going to build out the other form. Then we're going to get into the coding piece, but if you're following along or watching it all, uh, watching it, you should probably just build those two things out based on what I said already, or what I showed you as the demo, which is this form here, this first one, and then the other one here. Okay. So, you know, this one here, this is a, um, uh, a list box, this first one here, and then the rest of them here, these are, uh, tech, um, yeah, text boxes. Okay. And then some buttons. So not overly complicated in terms of the overall design of this thing. So I am going to go in and I'm going to build this out first, and then we're going to get into the code. Now I've said it before, and I still mean it again, build your GUI first. Okay. Build the user interface first. Don't click on any of the buttons and start doing coding. Just build the forms first. And once you've built the forms, then you can go back in and start matching up the code to the actual functionality that you want these forms to perform. So build out the user interface first, then code. Okay. It's the best place to start. You really do have to, because you need to be able to label all of these different things correctly so that when you get into the code, you can identify them as the objects that you want to use in the application itself. Okay. So please not only build out the user interface first or the forms, but be very, very strict with your labeling. Okay. So that you can find the things that you've created. Okay. 
So let me close those out and then I'll start working on the first form, which is the product maintenance. Okay, this form right here. So the first thing I want to do with this is actually resize this down to um, 410. Let's see, what's say four, 410 by 184. Um, actually not that size. I want to do actually 602, 602 wide. I don't care, 600 wide, 630 wide, doesn't matter. And about uh, 250 deep, okay? Somewhere around there. And you can tell I'm, I'm eyeballing it because down here on the bottom, I can see the dimensions of this, this window. If I do go into my properties, you can see it's right here. If I want to actually be absolute with this, um, I can do that. So I'll just, I'll change that to 20. Okay. And then you can see the size changes. Uh, next thing I want to do is I want to change the name. I don't want it to say form one. Okay. So this is going to be book product maint and, and, and did I spell it right? Doesn't look like I spelt it right at all. Um, and I missed an A. Okay. So that's just the name of the form itself. That's all I've changed so far. Um, what's going on? Oh, I left the page. Okay. Uh, okay. So I, even I did it wrong. This should be F R M. Okay. Book. A uh, product. Maintenance. I'll just put mate. I'll do the whole world. Book product maintenance form. Okay. And so when I get down to here for the actual text, this is where I want book product maintenance. Okay. And you can see that the actual form changes. And I want to add a list box. So I'm going to go to my toolbox and it looks like under general, where is everything? All form windows. Okay. I don't want all form common commands. So I want a list box to go into here. Okay. And I'm going to eyeball that to that's the one I wanted um, the size to be really what's a good size for that. Um, so the size of my list box, if I go down to here into size and I can type that in, uh, 410 comma 185. Okay. And you can see that that now changes. And this I'm going to label as, you know, just list box products. Okay. And because it's a list box, I'm not going to give it a name. Now I need to put in a couple of buttons. Uh, so where's my buttons on here? I need three buttons to go somewhere around here. Okay. And so this button will be uh, not button one. Uh, we'll just say add button. Um, we'll say add product actually. Now I'll just go with add. Add is fine. And down here on the text, we'll say add product. Okay. So that's that. Now let's go and copy this two times, line it up here and here, and then go change these, uh, settings. Okay. So this one's going to be, del uh, yeah, delete. I want this one to be delete, uh, BTN, BTN delete. name or text is going to be uh, delete product. Oh, it should say delete product and it does, but you can't see it because of the size of the text or the form. Okay. And then this final one here is going to be exit. Okay, I think that that part is done. I haven't, I don't think I've missed anything, but let me go and check where it is actually opening up. 
So a couple things I do want to change um, in here is my start position. So I'm going to change this to uh, center screen. And I want to go up to here to my cancel button. I want to set to uh, button exit. Okay. So I'll set those. I think everything else is probably fine. So the next thing that I have to do is actually go out and build the other form. So to do that, I'll click on here and go add new item. And you can see the windows form right here. And this one I'm going to call, I'm going to call this one, uh, FRM form FRM new product. Um, yeah, just new product. Okay. And I want to show you something here. So I've got this new, it says new form. And when I created the very first one, when the application opened up for this one, notice it just defaulted to form one. But when I do create the new forms, that's when I can give it its name. So if I go into here and I do a rename of this form, this one should be FR. M and product main. Okay. So now I have the two different form names. Okay. So, and they're both, uh, prefixed by FRM. So I know that those are forms when I look at those. All right. So let's go over to this one and start building out this guy. And it's, uh, it's pretty small, uh, in comparison to the other form. This one is uh, size wise, I think it looks to be like uh, 392. So if I go into properties size and I can go 392 comma uh, 224. Okay, and you'll see that one shrinks down pretty significantly. Now notice when I'm in here, I can't really drag and drop that, right? I can drag and drop it when I'm actually uh, when I, when I'm running the form, but in here, it just kind of holds on and defaults to that. I'm sure there's a way to control the movement uh, inside here. I just forget or don't really care to do that. Okay. So my start position for this one is also going to be uh, center screen. Okay. And what do I need with this one? I need, uh, looks like a couple of buttons, uh, two buttons. So let's go to our button and I need a, so far a save button. Okay, so I'll go to BTN, BTN save. Okay, and I'm just gonna change the text on there to say, uh, actually ampersand save, so that I've got an underline under my S word. Okay, and that's saved now. And let me go and check and see if I, if I needed that for my other ones. Um, I think I needed that actually in the exit button. So if I go to exit, and I put an ampersand right here. Okay. It updates my, okay. That was a, not an ampersand. That was actually a dollar sign. This one here. So I did it again. Okay. I'm looking for an ampersand, not a dollar sign or percent sign. Okay. It's the, and just above the number seven. Okay. And there that is. So let me go back to this one and I've also I need to put in a cancel button. So I'll do a copy, uh, of this one, move it over. This one is going to say, uh, cancel. Okay. BTN cancel done. And I need, uh, two text boxes right down here. I need a text box. I actually need three. Okay. And this one is going to be called uh, TXT uh, code. All right. And I'm going to just do these ones. Just going to do a uh, description, a text box for description and down on my text, it will say, um, I don't really have a text that I need to put into this, right? Cause I'm going to use labels for this. 
Um, but for my third one, I'm just going to call this one um, text price. Okay, this is a text box for price. There. And now I got to add three labels. Now that I have my cancel button there, I'm going to click on the actual form itself, go to here, cancel button, and add that one there. Change that. Really quickly, I want to show you something about the buttons. Over in your properties window, you, you have um, this flat appearance, uh, and you have these different um, sort of styles of, of the way you want your buttons to look. Okay, so if I click on this and I change the different style. Okay. Um, you can get kind of a different combinations of things that you want. Um, but overall the flat style is, you know, it really standard in system look pretty much the same to me, but there's flat and then there's pop-up. And so if I switch it to pop-up and I run this and you'll see it kind of you can put your cursor over it and it does different things. Same with the other ones, but it's flat. It's just a different look on how you want to do these. So you can go in and modify the look and feel of these things. Uh, and then there's just more that you can do, but it, it's not a lot. Okay. Um, even flat is kind of boring itself. So I'm just sticking the standard for now anyway, but you know, you can go in there and do those edits. Okay. So for now I've, all I've done is created two different uh, forms. I've renamed them and I have done no coding, no connecting of either one of them yet. Okay. So that's where we stand. So the next thing that I need to do is actually add a class. Okay. And this class is going to handle the products. And so what I'm just going to do here is I can click on this, right click on that, and I can go to add and I can go down to class. Um, which is really probably the preferred way. It's the quickest way. Um, but there's probably other ways in here you could do it, but this is the fastest way. So we're going to hit class and you can see visual C sharp items. I want the, the very first one at the top called class. And I'm going to call this one product. Okay. So it's just product, not with a pluralized, just product. So this is a class for a single product. Okay. And I don't have to put the filing extension in, it's gonna do that for me. So you can see here now in the uh, Solution Explorer, I've got this product. And let's look at a couple of things in here. So we've got the uh, namespace, which is the entire uh, project we're working on. It's got all these using statements. So far, nothing's being used. And we have this class called product, okay? and Notice right now, though, that this class, it's got nothing in it. It's, it consists of nothing. But we do have to change the permissions of this class, okay? Because um, it doesn't specify, like when I made it that way, it didn't actually specify it um, in sort of the wizard that created this particular file, but I want it to. And so I want to make this public. Okay, because if I don't make it public, there's a chance that it won't be readable. Okay, so we'll make this public. And of course, inside here, I've got three member variables. Okay, and these ones are uh, all private. Okay, it's kind of different because in C++, as an example, you can do something like this, do private and then name your variables. Um, but with C Sharp, you have to kind of explicitly name each one of them uh, to that way. So uh, we're going to say code semicolon. We're going to do private string again. And this one is going to be description. Okay. And then the final one is going to be a decimal. And this will be price. 
Okay, so so that's all I've got. I've got my three uh, member variables. So before I continue, I want to just sort of address this one issue here. Okay, these are tag properties. Okay, so when I built out the actual form, remember I had a text box for code description and price. Okay, but we've got these tag property settings. Okay, so when we when we continue with this and we looked sort of inside the class, um, we have three properties now that we've created. So you can refer to them as a, um, a variable or um, a member variable, but ultimately they are also a property. It's another name for these. Okay, and you can think about properties because I can go into my properties uh, box and start manipulating all of these little uh, properties. Okay, so this one is a string that contains a code that uniquely identifies the product, yada, yada. So you get that. You understand what's going on there. So I don't need to go through each and every one of them. So if I actually go back to this, uh, into the form, and I look at the properties, I'm going to go to code, select the, um, the box there, and then I'm going to go over to here, tag. Okay, and I'm going to name that code. Okay, because I want it to match up with what's in that box later. And then this one here is going to, again, match up with the description tag. Okay, so description there. Okay, and it's obviously important that uh, I get the right spelling with that tag. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just in case I've spelled it wrong in one place, I want to make sure that they're spelled wrong everywhere. Okay. And then finally here with this one, I'm going to go to tag and I'm going to type in price. Okay. So I'm, I'm populating these tags because we're going to see them again. And so we've got our member uh, variables or our properties or however you want to refer to it. The next thing we're going to need is our no argument constructor. Okay. So this is going to be public. And it's just going to be called product. It's just called product and it's empty. So we can actually put these brackets all on one line. It's, it's a little bit cleaner. I don't typically do it, but for, for this, I do. The next thing we want to do is now look at a, a constructor with arguments. So again, public, public product. And within here, what we have is our parameter list. Okay. And there is a difference between a parameter list and an argument. Uh, the parameter is what's actually declared in the uh, method definition. The argument is what gets passed through there. Okay. So there is a subtle difference. Okay. So we're going to populate this with those three um, properties above. So we've got string. Uh, string code, comma, string, description. And lastly, we've got decimal and price. Okay, so those are all in there. And then, of course, we need brackets. Okay, this is extremely similar to Java. And so, you know, because the, the uh, properties above are private, we need a way to access them. So we're going to do this, this dot uh, code, and you can see that it actually pops up. Okay. And what I want to do though, is just change it slightly. Okay. Because I want to be able to dis distinguish between the properties up top and the this statement down here. So I'm going to capitalize these and I should be capitalizing. Okay, uh, code. And of course, now it's just going to be lowercase code, right? That's all I'm going to do there. And I'm taking this and I'm assigning it over to this dot code. That's all I'm doing at this point. So you see that I'm getting an error and that's okay because what is it saying? It's saying product does not contain a definition for code. 
right? I haven't declared this anywhere else, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. We'll get to it. So it's this, this dot description. Okay, is equal to description right there, semicolon, and then this dot price, capital price, and that equals price. Okay. And, you know, I'm getting these errors. That's okay. And you'll notice that the IntelliSense actually changed it for me. Uh, so you got to be careful of that because it'll, it'll happen to you quite often. As much as I love the IntelliSense, it will do stuff like that and it'll cause problems for you down the road. Now, I want to go move down a little bit because I want to make a modification now to this idea of this code. Okay, so it says it doesn't exist. Okay, but now we're going to actually make it go and exist in a different way than maybe you're used to. Okay, so this looks like I'm creating a, a method. I'm not actually creating a method. Okay, so what we're going to do is this uh, public string. Okay, and this is where we're going to define code. Okay, and normally you would expect that I would be putting in brackets and stuff like this because this is it's kind of the beginning of a definition to a function or a method, but it's not in this case. What we're doing is a getter and a setter. And so what is going to happen is we're going to do this get. In here, we're going to say return code, the lowercase code. Okay, and then down here on the next line, it's going to be set. Same thing. And we're going to say code equals value, right? And so that's how we're going to set that that way. And notice up here now, the error under code has disappeared. All right. So we're going to go and do the same thing for um, description and for price. So obviously, I'm just going to uh, copy and paste all this. And of course I'm getting this error here, right? And the reason is I copy and paste it, but don't forget, I've got a different data type. So this is a decimal. And so that clears that error now and everything looks fine. Okay. So next thing I want to do in this, because it's just a, so far it's just this class. I've only created my constructor here. I've done my, uh, get in set method or they're not even methods, but my gets and sets in here in order to make all of this work. Uh, and so what I need to do now is uh, start working on a couple of different methods. Okay. And they're going to be called the same thing, but bear with me what's happening here. Okay. So we're going to do the first one. It's going to be, um, sorry, it'll be uh, public string. So the return type is a string. Okay, so whatever I'm getting back is going to end up being a string. And what I do want to be able to do is like display text in um, in my um, text box. So obviously, if I'm displaying text, we talked about this before, it's a string. Okay, so what this one is going to be is public string, and I'll say get display text. Okay, in this, the intent here is to display the text in the text box. And you see, it's got nothing started. I'm getting all sorts of errors because I'm not done. So I'm going to say string and sep. Okay, we'll get to that. So I'm creating my brackets and everything here. And I'm getting an error already. So what does this error say? Product, get display, string not all code paths return a value. And so what it's saying is, where's my return value? Cause you've, you've stated that you're going to have a return value because you've used the key, this data type called string. So what I need to do is just do the code here. All right. And so I'm going to do return, uh, code. It's a little bit of concatenation code plus sep. Okay. And I'm going to come back to this, uh, and this is going to be price dot two string. Oops, two string. Okay, 
And we're going to set that to uh, a currency. So C. And, it, uh, and then we just go to SEP again. And what this SEP is doing is actually just separating out uh, the words. Okay, so code, price, and uh, description. It's just separating them out in this order. So description, okay, in a semicolon. And now that I have the return statement, you see that it actually uh, clears it all up. So I don't like the formatting here. What I'm going to do is uh, control type in KD and it auto formats for me. Okay, so so this is one scenario where I, I know what I have. This is the information that I do have. But now I'm going to do this in a situation where I don't know what I have. I don't have an actual, um, there's, there's no input yet. Okay, so the user hasn't typed in anything. So I can't really display when I have nothing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this whole thing and right above, I'm going to go to here and do another version of get, get display text. But this time, what I'm going to do is actually call this function or this method. Okay. And I'm going to put it in a return statement here. And so it's going to look like this. And of course I get an error right away. Um, and the way I handle this is I'm going to say separate like this and put a space in there. Okay. And so I'm actually calling this second method. Okay. And you see, I'm getting an error already. And the reason is because this is, has no parameters. I can't have two identical, uh, methods. Okay. They, they have to be different And the way they they are often different is just in the argument list. So if I take this out, my, my error actually clears. Okay. But notice they're the exact same method name, the parameter list inside here is different. And that's how we do overloading. All right. So what else do we have to do in this one? I don't think I have any more to do in this particular uh, class. So let me go ahead and save that. And I'm going to do a build on it just in case I get an, an error that I haven't noticed. So I've got no, no failures. Okay. So I want to just talk a little bit more about these, these two things. Okay. And they're actually referred to as accessors. Okay. And Another way of looking at these is read and write properties. Okay. And if only a get accessor is included, the property is called a read only. Okay. And you can also create a, a write only property, uh, which is just a set accessor. Okay. So, you know, a set accessor is kind of uncommon. It's uncommon to have these uh, without one and the other. Okay. So, these are sort of special, um, special properties that we're coding here. And really that's all it is. We're, we're just kind of coding in a roundabout way, properties about these, uh, variables that we've put in. Okay. And so let's take one minute of our time to talk about this no argument constructor or default constructor. And this one here with, uh, three different arguments or parameters. Okay. So you see here, we've got nothing in here. We're passing three through there. Okay. But when I want to get to the point where I can instantiate an object, when I look at this line here and I'll get the laser, when I look at this one here, this is calling my no argument constructor. This is just, there's nothing in there, but then what's happening is the other constructor with the three arguments, one, two, three, uh, what we're doing is we're taking all of that information and we are going to assign it to product one that we just made from the constructor. Okay. So that's really what's going on in that situation. That's why we have the two, uh, constructors, one with no arguments and one with arguments. And just one last thing I do want to point out. Uh, there is another way of doing this is kind of the way I would prefer to do it is that we take this product here. This becomes our data type. And when I create this, I actually do this all on one line. Okay. So you would see the product. It's really difficult to uh, do this with a mouse. Um, 
but that's now all one line is the way that I would have done that. Okay, so just so you know, you can break it up into two pieces, but it's not necessarily you, you can do it all in sort of one line. Because once you create this object, it's important to understand that product now is the same as my data type. So typically we see, you know, string uh, name. Okay, string is your data type. Now, when we create the, the class, that class becomes my new data type. Okay, so it's important to understand that a class is really, you're just making a, a user defined data type. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is create a new class and this class is going to be called validator. Okay. So I'll go back up to here and right click on this add class. And this is going to be called validator. Like I said, validate OR. Okay. And of course the extension gets made all on its own and you can see right away, I'm inside my book product uh, maintenance in that namespace. I've got all these using statements. And I've got this um, class validator. And I want to talk a little bit about static stuff. Okay. And I don't mean, you know, rubbing a balloon on your head and sticking your head to a wall. Um, what I want to talk about is, is this relationship between static um, member variables and static uh, methods. Because this particular uh, class that we're doing, I want to, I want to actually set this to private. Okay because this class is going to be meant just to do validation of the user's input. Okay. And so let's look at what that does actually. So when I open up the application and I say, okay, uh, delete product. Okay. It's not letting me do anything. That's okay. So I go to add product and I go and I don't put anything, but I hit save. Okay. So this is really what we're talking about with validation. Okay. So the first thing code is a required field. Okay. And description is a required field price must be a valid decimal value. And I don't have anything in there. So I want to have this validator. Okay. But notice I don't want to start instantiating a bunch of objects from this. Okay. I don't want to create instantiation here. So this is why this is going to be a bit of a special class. It's going to be a static class. Okay. So let me close this out. And I want to change this. Uh, it's already private class validator. Okay. But I want to change it again to, uh, this here, this static. All right. And let's talk a little bit about this. Um, everything looks okay in here. I just have to make a little bit more modifications to this to get that error to go away. Um, and it says, you know, elements define a namespace cannot be explicit, blah, 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 whatever. I'm working on it. Okay. Be patient, Mr. Compiler. So since the validator class shown in, in this, um, contains, it's going to only contain static, uh, members. Uh, the static keyword is used to declare the entire class as a static class. Okay. So. You're seeing I'm declaring it as static, but all of my members um, and my methods are also going to be declared as static. Okay, so this kind of prevents you from uh, accidentally coding any non-static members for this class or creating an object from the class. Okay, so that's why we use static. It's different than const. Don't sort of associate it with const. It's static. Okay, it has a different meaning. Okay. Um, and so a class that isn't declared as a static class can include static members and non-static members. Okay. So that's what we just did previous to this, because when we look at products, it's not declared as static. Okay. This one is declared as static. And that is really to, to make sure that all of our members and all of our methods are also static. Okay. And so what it also means is that only a static method can communicate with a static member or a static variable. Okay. So you have to make sure that those are also declared when you're doing this. And so we're going to create this first variable inside of our, uh, and start inside of our class. And this one's going to be a uh, private static 
string and it's going to be called line end. Okay. And what we're going to set this to is our, uh, our, uh, escape sequence here for a new line. Okay. So now we don't have to type in this, uh, new line escape sequence. Every time we can just call line end. All right. And so now that is a static, uh, member variable. Okay. Um, so because it's in a static class and it's a static variable, any method that wants to use it or call it also has to be static. Okay. So it, we're going to do the, um, getter in the setter, but don't forget, this is not the typical, like it's not a method. So if, let me just show it to you this way. So if I say public, public static again, bring, and we call this line end, just like this capitalized. We just went through this in the other class. And now we're going to do a, a get, and we're going to say return line end, the lowercase one. Okay. And then down here, we're going to say set and line end lowercase is going to be equal to value. Okay. And so again, we've, we are taking the static and we're doing the get in the set. But now we want to go uh, and do some other stuff with some different uh, methods. And, you know, you'll see what I'm saying about accessing that static class. So I want to make a, uh, I want to do that validation about those required fields. And the way I'm going to do this is this would be a, uh, it would be a public string as my return type. public string and I'm going to say is is present. Okay. And that's a method that we're going to do in here. And so my issue is, uh, and we'll see this in a minute. I'm going to just type in a string message, set it to nothing right now for now. And we're going to do this, uh, if value, okay. We're going to just type in value and that's value from line 21. If value, not value tuple. Is equal to nothing if it's empty, basically. And it doesn't want to play ball here. So I'll copy paste, do this. Okay. If that is the situation I'm in. Okay. And it's saying it can't read that. Okay. It, it cannot read this value. And the reason it can't read this value is because like I said, just a minute ago, I need this to be a static. Okay. I need this static property in order to be able to read that now. Okay. And it doesn't exist in the current, uh, context. So show potential fixes. Now what's happening in here? What is it saying? It wants me to do, uh, the, the name value does not exist in the current context. So I'm going to just leave that for a minute and I'll come back to it. And the only, well, I'll, I guess I can do it now. And the issue is right here is that this string of value doesn't exist yet, right? String value. And then I'll do my other one string, string name. Okay. So I've got both my parameter list and this will go away when I put in a return type. But for now, what I'm going to say is this value, there's nothing. So we're going to say, okay, uh, message is, we'll just do a plus equals. Uh, name, name, and we'll do concatenation again. And we'll, now we'll type in the message that says is a required field. Okay. Period. 
and then do this concatenation again. And now I want my line end, okay, with a semicolon. I want that there. And so I can go outside of my if and just do my return uh, MSG, and return message. Okay, and now you see that this error went away because it was waiting for a return type. Because if I specify here that there's a string, that means there's a return type. And so I have to have the keyword return in there with this method. All right, and so you're seeing a lot of the other things disappear. Now, what happens if I take this out? Okay, if I just uh, X that out, am I getting any errors yet? Yeah, and there it is. I can't talk to that one because I don't have I'm, I'm a method that is static or not static trying to talk to variables or members that are. So I put that in and that message does clear itself up. So let's keep going because there's another method that I wanna put in here. And this one is going to be our is decimal. Okay, it's gonna validate whether or not we're putting in the proper uh, decimal value. Okay, or that it is a decimal to begin with. Okay, so we're gonna say, uh, public static string is decimal. It's a method call with two parameters and it's going to be the same two as above. Um, yeah, it's the same two. Put those in there and put in our brackets. And just to get that error to go away, I'm going to do return uh, msg. Okay, and that should clear that error. But msg has not been declared, so now I got a different kind of error. So string msg. Okay, that's going to be empty. Okay, and then I've got another condition here that I want to do. So what I'm going to do is just take this and I'm going to copy it, paste it here, and then just do some, some editing here. Okay, so I've got the first line, but my, I don't want my value to be that. What I want to do is say is if it's not decimal, dot try parse. Okay, and then inside my bracket, I've got value, and it's not equal to nothing. Uh, what this one is, is uh, this different sort of syntax you're used to. I, I don't know if you can see it on the, string, on the screen, but it says out decimal result. Okay, and um, a string represents representation of a number to its decimal equivalent. Okay, so if you want to know more about that, you can just go on there if you're following along and read that note and try to understand. But what I'm going to type in here is out space underscore and then another bracket. Okay, because I'm actually, I've got a bracket inside of a bracket here, right? And so you'll be able to go in and sort of have a look at that on your own time. And so the rest of it, I just need to update this message to say um, must be a valid decimal value. Must be a valid decimal value. And then again, this line end. And, and so that's really all that's going on there, right? And again, if I take the static out, you know, it's going to cause an error for me for this thing. And it'll say show potential fixes and so I'll click on this one and say, you know, okay. And it added it for me. Okay. So let me save that. Now I left this in here, uh, to, to kind of highlight something here before notice that I typed in private. Okay. And I'm getting this error. And what does it says? It says element defined in namespace cannot be explicitly declared as private protected, protected internal or private protected. Okay, so I have to change this to public. Okay, in order to make that go away. All right, so let me save this because I really don't think there's much more I want to do in this particular file. And I've that one compiled just fine. Now I think it's time to start actually working on the code inside of our uh, classes.
So I do want to get to this part, but there's one more piece I'm going to do, and it's kind of outside the, the scope of this, um, this project for now. I'm going to make a, a new class and it's my database class. Okay. But we're, we're not there yet for classes. And this one's going to be called, uh, it's going to be called, um, product database. But this is going to come up in the future, right? Where I think somewhere around chapter 12, this is probably 16 or 18. So we still have a ways to go before we get into this. So what I'm going to do is just take the entire file that I have, um, and I'm going to copy and paste it into there. So I'll copy it and paste it. And I'm just going to leave that there the way that is. Okay. And as you can see, I'm actually getting a, an actual error here. And the reason that I'm getting the error is because it's looking for product maintenance. Okay. So I'm copying this out of a different file and you can see that my namespace doesn't actually match up. So if I were to actually go in and uh, change this to the same namespace as my other uh, files that I've been creating, which is this book product maintenance, uh, then it clears all of my errors. Okay. And I'm not going to go through this because I, you know, I need that for a later date, but I had to actually put this in now because we have this thing here where we're creating our list of products. Okay. So this database is where we're reading some, um, actual information from in our list. So when we, when we use the application and I'll just actually run it, uh, and show you what I'm talking about. So when I'm in here and I say, you know, there's, there's nothing in this window right now, but then I say add a project. So I'm going to say, see a uh, description, whatever, and then a price, uh, you know, and I save it. Well, this is where this file is going. Okay. And so these are the products that it's actually uh, capturing. And you can see here in the file, I've got product code, product description, price, and I'm using these products uh, add methods, which are all part of a list. And when we get to databases, we're going to talk about this list idea, which you can see right here on line 24, but I'll save that for a future lesson. Okay. So let me close that down, but we may come back and refer to this, uh, from time to time as we're building out the rest of this, uh, code. Okay. Well, in fact, I do think that I'm probably going to talk about uh, lists today anyway, um, because they'll be they'll become an important thing um, probably in this application. And so, you know, I, I have a choice to make. Where do I start coding? Do I want to code in this one or do I want to code in that one? And so what I think I'm going to do is actually go to uh, this one. I'm going to start doing the code inside of here. Right. Because what happens is I'm, I'm, there's nothing here when I open up the application, uh, there could be data that's already stored. And then which case I can delete that data. But if I open it up for the first time and there's no data, then I have to click the add product button. Okay. And so then I'm going to want to have somewhere to go to test that out. And so when I click on that button, it's going to bring me to this form here. So what I will do is actually do the code here first and then save it. And then once it's saved, it's going to bring me back here and display this. So I think, you know, chicken or egg, I don't know, but my preference is I'm going to start here and hopefully we'll, we won't find out that that was the wrong way to go, but I'm going to start at this one and I'm going to code out this and then, uh, we'll just keep going. Okay. So I'm just going to open up. You know, the, I've got the form there and the easiest one to start with is my cancel button. So I click on that and you can see now my event handler for my cancel button opens up. And as always, this is the easiest one to actually, uh, to actually code. Okay. Just basically just this dot close, right? So that's done. Great. We've got our first one done but we've got so, so many more. So 
When we open this box up for the first time and it is completely empty, okay, there's, there's nothing in it yet. Nothing is populated yet, but we, as soon as we hit that save button, we are going to actually have an actual product. Okay. So what I have to do is give it a starting point. So when I go back up just between my, uh, this cancel button and my initializing the component here on line 19, what I'm going to do is say private product, uh, product. I'm just looking product. Okay. And I'm going to just create a variable from that. And this is what I was saying about before that when we're creating an object or a, a variable, I mean, in all honesty, this is at this point, just a variable. And when we set it to null, okay, this is a null value that we are now assigning to this brand new variable called product in products data type is a product. Okay. And it would almost be like doing this, um, int. Okay. Or, uh, I don't know, a string. Okay, it'd be the same thing. But in our case, what we're doing is saying no, set it to a product. Okay, because we've created the product class, which is this file right here. All right. Okay, so we open it up and we've got that. And what next? And so we now have these, um, we now have these different method calls that we have that are separate from event handlers. Okay. So this is now this other method we're going to do is going to be called, um, get, get the new product. Okay. And where does get new product show up in here? And, and, you know, so far it doesn't, so we've got to actually create this one, right? So this is going to be a public public and it'll be a uh, same data type as a product because we're trying to, uh, you know, create this product uh, or get this new product. And so this is going to be a data type of product and uh, a return type. A return type is going to be this product. Okay. But it's a little bit different. And so we're going to say get new product. Okay. And in here, now we're going to say, show this dialog box. Okay. So this is going to be this dot dot dialog, uh, show dialog box. So show dialog and here it is not dialog box. Sorry. Just this dot show dialog. Um, and then finish it with the semicolon and go to the next line. And so here we're saying, okay, show that dialog box for this, uh, for, for the product and then return a product. Sometimes, uh, with the IntelliSense, it can be a little, uh, frustrating because you hit enter thinking that you've, uh, actually captured it and you didn't because you didn't actually select it in the, um, in the dropdown. You have to scroll through that. Okay. So what I'm saying is, Hey, get my new product and then return whatever the new product is that we've just created. All right. So I want you to keep, uh, keep something in mind, right? We start here, we hit the add product button and it takes us over to here. We input some information and then we be, you know, when we hit that save button, we actually have to uh, validate it. There is a little bit of validation that we, we have to do on, on that save. Okay. Um, and once the validation passes and when we select that save button, what's going to happen is this box is actually going to close and return us back to here. Okay. And now we have an option of exiting the entire application or deleting or adding another product. Okay. So just to be clear, I, I type in some information, I hit save and it has to be valid data. 
Okay, and if it is valid data, then this is going to close. All right, so let's, uh, let's continue on with what we were doing in here. And I need a new, uh, new method here. And this new method down here is going to actually be called um, uh, validate, okay, is valid data. Uh, and I'm going to do this one first before I do the save because I need the actual um, I need the validation piece taken care of before I can do the save. So this is going to be a private bool and it's called is valid uh, is valid uh, data and I didn't camel case that properly. Uh, capital V is valid data. Okay, and I'm not going to pass any parameters through it because um, I don't need to for this specific one. Um, and it's a it's a boolean. Okay. So the reason I'm setting this to private is because nobody on the outside of this class needs to see this. It needs to just be on the inside of the class. I'm going to use this. Um, in my future save method. Okay, so that's why I can make this private. It, it's never going to be used outside of the this class. All right. So if I say bool success equals true, that's good because we'll use this later on, right? And then string is going to be error message. And I'll set that to empty to start with. Okay, and then now I have these three lines that I want to do. Okay, and they're all going to do with the code, the description, and the price. And don't forget, we have an entire class back here dedicated to actually, um, you know, dedicated to this validation. We've got is present and is decimal. Okay, so if I go back into here, this is where we're going to address that. So now I've got error message and I'm going to, uh, I'll do it this way. Uh, I'm going to define everything that I'm going to then add to my error message. Now, remember, we can call validator, which is that other class that we already did. So validator or validate. Now I want validator right down here, this class validator dot is present and you can see that the is present is actually present in my IntelliSense. And so that took parameters. Okay. So this was T X T, uh, the only one available code dot text. So this is all the text that we're typing in comma and then T X T, which was code. I want code again. And then remember, this tag remember in the properties we did tag so this is to string okay and let me finish this off now remember this tag okay it was back in uh, i believe in here was it in here uh or was it in here i think it's in here in our properties and we look at tag down here that's where we're referring to it is code okay so let's go back into there. And so we've got text code dot tag to string. Okay. So now what I want to do is now that I know what I'm after, uh, I'm going to assign that to something. And in this particular case, I can do a plus equals. Okay. Cause I'm just going to keep building on, on top of it. So this will be now error, error message right here is what this is. Okay, so I've got that already. And here's the good part. I can copy, paste, and do some editing. And now I don't want to know about the code. I want to know about uh, my text txt description. And the same thing here, txt description again. Okay, two string. Okay, so that's good. And I want to do this one more time. Okay, but notice I'm calling the is present, but up here for the decimal, I want to know, is it a decimal? So I'm calling this other 
method from this different class. And so when I go to here, uh, I'm going to just change everything to is, let's see if it'll pick it up in the IntelliSense, is decimal. Okay, I'm gonna put in a little space around everything. Okay, and, and then try and delete this. So is decimal. Okay, so I'm picking it up this way and it shows it as a method call and it's not text price, it's, t or uh, code, it's text price. Okay, and it is still a two string. Okay, so I've got all of these three things uh, going for me right now. Okay, and of course, I'm getting the error because I don't have a return type yet. Or at least I think that's my, my first issue. Okay, I haven't used this yet, but I will. And so let's go, let's keep going in here and do, um, let's, let's look at the actual condition. So if error, error, error message is not actually empty. Okay. If it doesn't, it's, if it's not the same as what's going on in line 30, then what? Okay. Now let's look at our, our condition. So we're going to change, uh, that success is actually now a failure. So success is equal to uh, fail or false, okay? And the next thing is we're gonna say a message box, message box um, dot show. And inside the message box, we're gonna now call one of these errors. So it'll be error message that we've created and we'll say entry error. Uh, okay, finish that off with the semicolon. And then just outside here, we've got to clear that error that we have on line 27, and we're gonna say a return to um, success, return the success um, thing. Okay, and I clear my error, all right? And so everything there is good in our validation. I'm gonna save that. All right, and now what am I missing? I, I actually have to go up now and look at that save button because right now I don't have a, an event to handle that save. So I'll go to it, do the easy way and double click it. And I always do recommend that you double click it because it creates the equivalent code in the other file that we talked about before. Let me move the close down to the very end. Okay, and save button, uh, I'll just leave the save button there, okay. And really with our, our save button, all we want to do is again, call the validation function or method. Sorry. I, I say them all the time, method or function. To me, they're the same thing. One is C++, one is Java and C sharp. Okay. So now I'm going to call the method that I just created up here. This is valid. Okay. And so is, I'm going to say is, uh, paste that in there. And then if that's the case, then what? Okay, and this is where now we talked about product up here. We created product and we said, all right, set it to nil or a null, sorry. Okay, but now when we're validating it, when we actually have something populated in there and we want to save it, now we actually have to create all that into an object itself. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to say uh, new. Sorry, let me shift that over. So this is going to be new product. New product, and we're going to pass in three different arguments, and it's going to be text dot uh, code, and it'll be text, okay, comma, and it'll be uh, the next thing will be text dot description dot text and then comma will be uh, we got to do um, this uh, let's see text dot price but price is a decimal value right so let me put the price into brackets because I need to uh, change this because right now it is a two I, I need to change it to a, a decimal 
Um, it's not letting me do it with that. Uh, that's... Okay, so let me actually close out this... Um, I'll close out this line. It might help me a little bit. So this uh, price needs to be changed from a text to a decimal, but I need the... Uh, the keyword here first, convert. And before that, well, I still need to do something. I need to add in my comma. So that's interesting to me. It's not actually allowing that to happen easily. Uh, what's wrong with convert? Show potential fix. Um, not really worried yet, but give me a second. Okay, I think the issue was that my price.text I actually didn't have text at the end or there was something else, but either way, what I did is I actually, I just uh, deleted it. Okay, and started over and it actually, it actually picked everything else I wanted. So if you do this, convert. Okay, don't do that. Okay, you go to dot, con let me start over. Okay, convert. You can go through there. This is what I'm saying. You have to actually select it with the uh, your up and down arrow key. Okay, convert um, dot to decimal. And in that, we're going to say our uh, TXT. And you can see it's looking for it dot text. Okay, and there it, it picked it all up the way it was supposed to pick it up. Except that now I also and missing a bracket. That's all. And so I'm good. Okay, so I've got all that stuff that I want to do with that new object that I want to create my new product. But I have to now assign it to something. And we already created the variable for it up top. Okay, and so now we're just assigning everything that we're creating to this product. Okay. And so once I've done that, I have validated it. And then I said, okay, now create it and put it into here. Now this is where I'm saying when I hit the save button, I'm saying this, this dot close. Okay. That's all I'm saying. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to try it out. Okay. But it's not going to work. I can tell you it's not going to work. All right. I do this add product and the reason the it's not working is because I actually haven't coded this piece of it and created this box uh, and created the event to do uh, add product. Okay, so we can't test that yet. I can't test anything on this one. All right. Okay, so we're here. Let's start coding uh, everything involved in that. And what's the easiest place that I could possibly start right now? Right there. I double click on this exit. And of course, with this, it is. OK, that's how I'm going to be able to close that one off. All right, what's next that we want to do in this? I've got a delete button. Uh, let's just look at it. Let's have a look at everything that's in there. OK, where did it go? It's right over here, and I'm going to put it right beside. Oops, I'm going to put it. OK, I didn't want to do that. OK, so I've got this. I've done the exit button, which was this one here. And what else do I have to do? I've got to do an add product. OK, and I've got to do a delete. So I've got a, a couple of these that I have to do. But when I actually go into this one and I hit the save button, it's going to exit out of here come over to here and populate the data inside here. So I've got a method that I have to do in there as well. And that's going to be called um, uh, the it's our load. OK, so we will address that one as well, because we've got a we have to fill a list box of all the items that we've actually created. OK, so let's go back into here. And I think the the place to start is actually with our our ad. OK, so when I go to here, uh, I'm going to double click on add. Okay, it brings us to here. And, you know, I, I already have the file open. I could have done that. But like I've said, and, and I'll keep repeating it, this is persisting in other different locations. So I want to do it that way so it gets uh, linked in two different files simultaneously. Okay, so I'm in add click. And um, 
Okay, so this one's going to be a little bit interesting for you guys. Uh, the way I do this. Okay, so just follow along. I'm going to do this new. And you can see uh, FRM form. Okay, I've got new product right here that I want. Okay, so I want the form. I want this um, form to open up or to to add. Okay, so let's look at this again. So we're totally clear. When I click on this button, I want this form to open up. Okay, so follow along what's going on. This one is called uh, form new product. So I'm saying uh, new. So when I use the keyword new, you know, something is getting created. All right. And so now what I'm going to do is say, okay, take this new form and assign it to a new product form. Okay. And that new product form, sorry, I should have had it actually the, the equals should have been in here. Okay. But what is the new, new, uh, what's the data type of my new product form? Okay. And don't forget, okay. That these, um, new product forms, this is a class. Okay. This is a class. So when I look at this, and I'm looking for a data type because new product form is the first time I'm creating this variable. Okay. I'm actually taking, I'm, I'm creating a, a form and saying, okay, give me one word that represents the name of that, fo that form now, that object. Okay. So what this is saying is this, this form, this object is now going to be given a variable name so that I can easily identify it. But every variable needs an actual data type. And this is where we get this particular data type is a uh, form. And you can see here form new product. Okay. So it seems a little weird that I'd be saying, okay, take this form, uh, dump it into a new variable name when it already exists. But the issue is look at it this, um, we're dealing with that relationship between a class and an actual object. And what I'm saying is when I open that up, you have to instantiate a form for me. You have to create into existence a form for me. Okay. So that's why we have to do this. And I hope that that's a little bit easy to, to follow. Okay. So we're going to do, um, this, this one here. So this is going to be new, uh, product form. Okay, dot get new product. Okay, and get, do I have a get new product in there? Now, there's a, there's an issue here. Okay. And I hope you can see it, but what I'm looking for is get new, get new product right there. Okay, and that is a method call. Okay, so what am I trying to do when I say this? Okay, so I created it over here. And now I'm saying, okay, I've created you. Now go and call this get new product method. Now, where is this located? Where's get new product method? Where does that come from? So if I go peak definition, where's that going to take me? This is going to take me to my new product form. Okay, which is which one new product form. Okay, and then it's going to go and say, Oh, this one over here. Okay, this one here. Okay, so remember, we already we we did this one already in the last, uh, the last uh, form class that we we created. Okay, so that's where it's saying, Okay, now now I've got this new product form now go in and start getting me stuff out of there. All right, let me close that down. And what do I have to do with that data? I now want to assign that to a variable type. Okay. And I want to assign that to a product. Okay. And so far I don't have that product data type or product type. So I have to do it this way. And this is just going to be a product data type and product. 
Okay, that's all that that's going to be. And it looks like I'm missing a semicolon. Okay, and now let's get into some validation here. And so we're going to say that uh, if my product is not null, so it's, you know, it's got a value, um, then what do I do? What happens next? And this is where we're going to go and do this add product. I'm going to warn you, I got to jump around a little bit here. Okay, so in this case, what we're saying is just follow along products. Okay, because don't forget, we didn't actually create the database. Remember back here, I actually uh, copied that from, you know, my my solution folder um, for this particular application. So we didn't code this together. All right. So that's why I I need to go and do something with this, because if you see here, I've got this this list of products. OK, so when I go back to here, it makes sense that I'm actually calling products. OK, but in this particular file, it doesn't know about products yet. I'm going to have to actually make that connection between my database products and the current file that I'm in. And so we're going to call we're going to say products dot add. OK, and within that, we're going to do uh, product. OK, add product which is this one here. Okay. And this obviously gives me an, an error. Okay. And so what I have to do now in order to make that sort of connection is I'm going to go right to the top here and I'm going to, uh, go and deal with that right now. I have to make this. So this is going to be private and we're going to say it's a list. Okay, and look at this syntax, and I'm, I'm hoping you're familiar with this syntax already, maybe from Java. Um, and it's a list from uh, products, uh, product. A list from product, okay, and it's uh, products with an S, and we're going to set it to null for now, okay. And so this is the, the, the products list that we're trying to get. So when I go back to my database, okay, and I see create this list, okay, we're saying this is going to be a list, okay, and this is all inside a method, okay, and, and this method is in my database. And the way we did this is we created a list Okay, and then down here, we start to populate information about that list of products and we put it into this get products method. Okay, so this exists in another location. So when I go back to here and I say, all right, we've got this products list up here. This is where I'm now going to use it. Okay, and so you have to understand you don't technically know about it yet because you didn't write the code for that piece. So that might be a little bit confusing for you. And so now what I'm doing is I've got this uh, add method here. And if I want to sneak a peek of where this exists, I can right click on it and peek definition or go to definition, but I'll peek the definition. And you can see that there's uh, this sort of library function called add. Okay, and this all has to do with data structures. And so it's outside of what we're doing right now. Uh, however, I will tell you, if you do have the PowerPoints to this, uh, you probably have seen all of this stuff in the, the PowerPoints. It is on page 251 in the Murak textbook in chapter eight. And it's actually referring to something called a collection. Okay, so there's a whole chapter. If you have the PowerPoints, if you've downloaded them off the internet or if I've given them to you, it's chapter eight in the book, it's 251 and it'll talk all about lists starting there, okay? And so the next thing I have to do in this particular one is I've gotta go and do product database. So I'm going to the other class, product database, which is this guy right here, going to product database, and I'm going to do save products. 
Okay, and within that, because that's an actual method, uh, what I have to do is save the products that I just added. Okay, so this is what I'm I'm saving. Okay, and let's go look at that. Let's go look at that um, save products. So what's happening in this file here, this save products. Again, this is a list that's being passed through here. Okay, and it has all to do with our code description and price. Okay. And so let's go back in here. And one thing I want to do really quick is a save all because I see a whole bunch of stars across the top and it tells me I haven't saved in quite some time. Okay, and now I have one more line of code that I've got here and it is going to be fill product list box. Okay. And this is a uh, method call, but guess what? It doesn't seem to exist yet because I haven't made it, which is what I'm gonna do next, okay? So I get the error because this actual method doesn't exist. So I'm gonna go above my add click and I'm going to make this, okay? Let's go to here. All right, and this this is a, uh, it's also private. And it's return type is actually a void. Okay, and what do I mean when I say it's a void? Okay, when I say the return type is a void, what does that mean? And I'm gonna give you an example. I uh, What's the implication to this, just in case you didn't really ever pick up on this? Okay, so if I if I uh, get rid of this and I change it to um, okay, what do you see immediately happen? Okay, I get an error because I don't have a return value here. I don't have something returned. Okay, but with a void type, I don't need a return type or a return. Uh, yeah, I, I don't need a return statement in my code. All right, so really quickly, what I'm going to do with this is uh, what I'm what I was trying to do in when I get to it is I want to fill this product list box. OK, that's my that's my intention here is to fill this list. And thankfully, uh, I labeled this properly as a list box. So when I go back here, uh, first thing I'm going to do is identify my list box uh, and it's actually list products that I, I want to put in there and I'm going to say items and dot clear. All right. And go to the next line because that's the first thing I want to do is clear it. Right. And then I'm going to do a for each. OK, so this is for each. And it'll be product. Now, I want you guys to remember this in case you ever do dot net uh, for web development you'll see this syntax a lot. Okay. Uh, and so it's going to be product P in products. Okay. And then from here, it's just brackets. And then we do a little bit more. And so now we're just going to put stuff in here. So it's going to be LST products dot items. Okay, so this is all the items that we had add. This is a method call, obviously. And now I'm going to refer to P. I'm going to say P dot. And what are my options? Get display text. Okay, get display text. And you remember this one was a method call. Now, it was one of the very first ones that we had done. Okay, and it is right down here. Get display text. Okay, and I'm I'm calling one or the other. Okay, my belief is this is the one I'm calling. Now remember this little uh, separator. Okay, you remember that? This is a placeholder for when I come back to here. And within this syntax, what I'm going to pass in here, what I want my separator to be, is a tab. 
Okay, literally like a line, a tab on your keyboard. That's what I want the separation between those words to be. So back here, when you were looking at it going, what in God's name was this sep? Well, this is what I'm saying. What is the escape sequence or the separator that I want? And so what I'm saying is show this as the code with a tab, then uh, my, my price and a tab, and then my description. So that's what that was all about. Okay. And so if you look now, my fill product list error down here has disappeared. Okay. And I've got one little bit left to do on this particular, uh, this particular, uh, form. Okay. And that one now is the delete product. Okay. The delete. And so now I'm going to go and I'm going to save all that. But remember what I was saying with the little star, that's basically meaning, Hey, go and save everything. You have it in a while, uh, save all of it. And that star goes away. That that's how, you know, okay. So I've got one more that I have to do and that's my delete product. Okay. And I'm going to move my delete above my exit. Cause to me, it makes sense that, you know, your exit button is the very last thing to happen. And it looks like I moved it a little bit too far. Okay. And now I'm going to do control KD and line up everything a lot more nice. Okay. So there's a little bit to this one. We got to do a for loop to delete everything inside that. And we've got some messages and uh, dialogue results and all that kind of thing. All right. Before I do that though, I want to test it. Let's go have a look at what happened. Now, remember this line here was how I created the new form. All right. This is my connection. This line here is my connection over to this. All right. So when I do a start without debug and I click add product, you see that the form instantiates. C blah, 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 um, $10 and then save. And I get an error, right? Cause I'm not done this thing. And if I look at my details, I'm sure I can find, uh, whatever the issue is. Uh, I don't know right off the top of my head. I don't really care. I'm, I'm just trying to show something. Let's hit exit. Nothing happens on my exit button yet either right now. Okay. So that tells me I'm not done that. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Okay. So the fact that that button, when I, when I tried to click it, it didn't actually exit. That tells me that I, my event is not set in here. Okay. So when I go into my events and I go to click, I can choose because, you know, I have different options for events and I actually didn't set this one to, uh, this button, this exit. Okay. So it makes me wonder, did I do it for any of my other ones? Okay. What have I done for cancel? And if I go to my event and you can see here that cancels actually set up. Okay. So that's okay. I'm, I'm happy with that. What about uh save? Okay. Save is good. Let's go back to add product. Okay. Add click is good. Delete is good. And it's just the, uh, exit that wasn't set up. So I wonder what that is a clue of. Okay, so if I go out to here, um, now everything here seems to work okay. Maybe I'll just do a build, okay, and see what happens. But either way, you know, that's how you you do a little bit of uh, troubleshooting and we found the error and it looks like there's no no major bugs in this. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go back to this delete. Let's figure out what's going on in, inside this delete. And so uh, I'm gonna do this, int i, is going to be equal to my uh, list. And what are my options for list? Products dot, okay, selected index. Okay, now you, you should sort of clue in when I'm creating an int i, it means somewhere out there in the ether, I'm gonna be looking at some sort of looping mechanism. In this particular case, it's gonna be an, an if, okay, but, um, I'm, I'm going to be scrolling through this selected index, right? Because I have more than one product that I'm going to be trying to save. And so what I'll do here is I'm going to say, if I is not equal to negative one, 
Okay, and so we talked about lists, uh, the selected list last week, or in the previous video, uh, where we talked about the, you know, the, the positions inside the selected indexes. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. It's basically saying, hey, if you're if you're not the empty one, uh, or there's there's a, a value there already, then this condition doesn't apply to you. Okay, so let's continue on with this. So we're gonna say uh, product, uh, product and product. But we're just creating a variable. And in here, we're going to say uh, it should be equal, sorry, equals uh, product, products. Now, what is it that I'm doing here? Okay, understand what's going on here. I've got products and I'm casting products. Okay, that's what I'm doing here. Whenever you see somebody put this thing here, you're, you know, think about casting. I'm type casting. So I, okay, now we're going to do string, string, uh, I didn't spell it again properly, string message, okay, are you sure you want to delete? Question mark. Okay, and a little bit of a space. And we're going to concatenate that with a uh, product description, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll put it down on the next line, uh, product description, product in singular product, B E S description. Okay. And again, a little bit of concatenation, uh, and there, I guess I can do this, right? I can take this, uh, out of there because I'm saying do you want to delete this particular product? Okay. And so I'll do uh, like this. And then let me finish that off. Uh, and why is it complaining? Why is message complaining? And it's because right up here, I didn't end off that properly. And so now let's look at this. When we do these messages, we want them to pop up. It's always out of some sort of a dialogue. So we want a dialogue result uh, to have a button. Okay, and then this button is going to do what? It's going to show us this uh, message box. Message box dot show. And inside the show, we're going to say message, comma, and then confirm delete. Okay, we've got that first part and we're gonna do a comma and because we're adding more to this. So message, message box button or buttons with an S and it's gonna be yes or no. Okay, and then that one we're gonna end. And then uh, the last thing is we need one more if, okay? So what, a, you know, we got to check the condition of the button if you selected yes, okay? So your options are going to be yes or no, but what if you actually selected yes? So we're going to say if you actually did select yes, um, if button, if button is equal to yes or dialogue result yes dot yes sorry um then what okay then we're gonna say uh products with the s dot remove we want to remove it okay and inside there what do we want to remove so product okay the product not all of the products the product Remove the one that we're talking about that we've selected. Okay. And then from the products, uh, what happened there? Uh, PRO product database. I'm looking for product database right there. Uh, what I want to do is save the products. Okay. And that again is something that is part of that list. You can see. 
Okay, so products right there. And then we want that last thing, this fill, uh, where is it? Fill product list box. Fill product list box. And that's a method as well. Okay, so let's save that. I'm gonna do a save all and I'm actually gonna build it. So there's one more method that I actually have to do uh, before we can finish this off. Okay, and it's a pretty important one. Uh, and, and what it is, is the load. Okay, so we actually have to load uh, the database. And so this is a pretty important step here. Um, and without this, no matter what we type in, because I'll show you really quickly, if we do a start, right? I said we'd test it. If I do add product and I say uh, C sharp, uh, Tom's book, put in a price and I go to hit save, I get this massive error, right? I'm not seeing any errors down here. If I look at the details, um, what's going on here? So let me let me quit that. And I want to do a, uh, a I want to do this in a debug mode because I want it to I want to show you where it takes me. OK, so it opens up. I do add and I say C sharp uh, Tom and 10 five, and I hit save and you can see right away where it takes me is it gives me this uh, this error right away. Now, in and itself, does it tell me very much other than I've got this exception? Okay, so right off the bat, I know that I've got some sort of a problem in this area. Okay, but I don't know what yet. Okay, but notice where it's stopping. It's stopping just above my product database. Save products. It's stopping just above that. So. You can see the error, it says, uh, this is the next statement that will be executed to change which statement, at blah, blah, blah. So let me move, can I move that down and, and see what happens? Does it help me out? Now, I wanna tell you guys something that in your uh, slides this week or in the PowerPoints, there's a whole section, chapter 11 on debugging. And so if you don't go through this, if you can't get a hold of the Mirac uh, chapter 11, then you're really not getting your money's worth. You should go out and figure that that piece out, the debugging uh, of, of this. But I just don't have enough time in entire semester to do something like that, okay? So anyway, I just wanna point that we've got this sort of issue, right? Then it sent me over to here. I, I moved over, it sent me to my actual database. And so it's talking about this right product. Okay, so text out in a right of my product. And then what happens? Where's it sending me? Uh, okay, so that's the end of that thing. But I can tell you that what has to happen, uh, let me try and close that. Take that breakpoint off. Okay, it's it's actually right here. I've, I've got to actually load the um, the database. Okay, I have to be able to do that. And so what we're gonna do is a private, um, it's a private void. There's no return type per se, uh, void. And it's gonna be called uh, form, F-O, sorry, uh, F-R-M. Hold on a second. Okay, uh, I'm just not typing very good right now. So it's F-R-M product. Okay. Okay, you see how I'm struggling to do this, right? And how I'm really struggling to, to do that to get that to show up. But guess what? What I'm talking about is, hey, load this kind of form here. So if I go to the form, and I double click the form, that's what I'm looking at. Okay, you may or may not have realized that you can do the same thing with a form. So I'm gonna move this to the actual top. So control X and I'm gonna go up here. So the reason I did it so painfully for you is that if you're trying to type it in and something's not there, it's it's not showing up in the IntelliSense, that's usually a good indicator that um, for whatever reason, it just can't see it, it doesn't know. 
But when I'm trying to type in a form and it doesn't identify it, the IntelliSense doesn't pick it up. That's my clue that the best way to go and do it is to double click that like this and it brings me right to it. And it also creates code in the background to initialize that. Okay, so it's a pretty, pretty important step there. And so what I want to do with this is uh, I want to go to uh, products. Um, let's do it this way. I want to call the database, okay, my products database, and I want to do get products. Okay, because when I save that, I'm sending it out to the database. Okay, I'm uh, when I'm in, in uh, this view, sorry, when I hit the save, what I'm doing is saying, send it over to my database and then simultaneously allow me to view it inside this box. Okay, so shut down, I hit add product, um, I hit save, it sends the data there, it closes this box and then opens this one and allows me to see what's the content of the database. Okay, and so, you know, this is, it seems a little bit confusing, but you kind of have to picture in your head what's really going on. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to, uh, I wanna get the products. Okay, so this method, if I do a, a peek to this, peak definition, takes me to products database into my list right here, get products. Okay, from the product database. And now I'm saying, take the information I want and put it into, my uh, products, okay, right there. Put it into products. And of course, uh, now I just need to call this particular function, right? Or method. So I'm gonna do fill product list box. Okay, so that, that product list box, uh, like I wasn't done yet, I still had to do sort of the code to this, okay, and do all the display piece, but you know, once I open up that view again, this has to get loaded. And the way that it gets loaded is I call this method. This gets me the data, okay? This from the data, okay, in my um, products and everything. And then this actually populates it or shows it or displays it inside my list box products. Okay, so let me save this and let's give this a try. Okay. Okay, start without debugging, add a product, C sharp, don't make a liar out of me, please. Um, can't even spell my own name and hit save and there it is. It appears in here uh, and I'm gonna add another product, uh, C++ blah, 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 uh, 10, $10, save it. Notice there's a tab in between. I'll go to the last one and I hope this works, delete. Okay, are you sure you want to delete? Yes, it's gone. Now I exit the application. Now, let me see if that data persisted. And there it is, okay? There's my data from before. All right, and don't worry, we're gonna get into database stuff in uh, future chapters, okay? So I'm glad this is all actually working. This has been a long video. Um, anyway, I, I'm, I'm gonna end it there. There's a lot to digest in this, and I hope you, you work through the code and uh, you know try to figure out some of this stuff on your own. It, you know, here is the actual database. Um, right here. Okay, so if you're at home and you're trying to follow along, this is what it looks like. I suggest you take a really quick uh, screenshot of that and then try and code out what's going on in here. Okay, take a screenshot and take a screenshot. That's what I would say. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next week.